there was a heavy down poor and Susie Lee tried repeatedly to call Dr. Klein but couldn't get through. She knew the doctor was humanity's last hope because she had witnessed Abraxas throw Superior into a volcano. But reaching the doctor was impossible because Abraxas had already found and eliminated him. Susie knew she was next. As she jumped out of her vehicle, Abraxas charged at her. Just when it seemed too late, Superior appeared, shielding Susie from the explosion with his cape. Abraxas was shocked to see Superior alive and received a powerful uppercut for underestimating him. Before Abraxas could recover, Superior rammed him with a train which put him to a final slip. But just as Superior was about to claim victory, the Annihilator appeared ready to strike him from behind with a big, big, big laser gun. The reality is that in this timeline and universe, much like our own, there are no real superheroes. Like our Superman, Superior is a fictional comic book character from comic books that had been adapted into movies. Simon Pony was an obsessive fan of superheroes, especially Superior. He was so obsessed that he went to the cinema every weekend to watch his movies repeatedly without getting bored. The only person who could bear his obsession was his best friend, Chris, who prefers more serious life action movies like Jason Bond, Rambo, and the slick James Bond. His problem with superhero movies like Superior is that he comes across as a goody two shoes. Unlike Jason Statham, Liam Neeson, or Jet Li movies, it's no Boy Scout nonsense. Simon Pooney was no ordinary kid. He was a kid who needed special care because he was suffering and living with multiple sclerosis, which is also known as MS. As a patient of this sickness, life had been very tough and to make matters worse for him, he got teased and verbally insulted by some of his schoolmates as if the condition he is in isn't bad enough. Since Simon Pony can't defend himself, Chris, his best friend or mother, always come to the rescue to protect him from school bullies, who just don't like him for no apparent reasoning. The reality is that behind the smiles and the positivity, Simon inwardly hates himself and his life. Simon Pony used to be a normal kid. Like any other, he was into everything in school, especially sports, where he was on the basketball team. Frankly, he had the skill set of a future champion and was the most talented in his school. He won championships for his school and got many awards as an MVP at a young age. Life was rosy for Simon Pony. One unfortunate day, he dislocated his finger. At first, he and everyone thought it was nothing serious. But as more injuries occurred without physical contact, it became apparent that something was wrong. When he did a medical checkup, he discovered that he had multiple sclerosis and it was aggressive. Within six months, he was in severe pain losing sight in one of his eyes and worse yet he could no longer walk properly he became reliant on crutches for support and an automatic wheelchair for mobility it was so bad that he could not talk which resulted in his speech impediment at one time it was a painful experience for simon pony his life was turned upside down in the blink of an eye for Simon Pony, life wasn't fear. But who says life is ever fear? As a victim of multiple sclerosis, Simon Pony was going through a lot. He couldn't live like any other teenager and became dependent on his parents. His life was unbearable and burdensome. You see, multiple sclerosis or 
MS is a bit like when the body gets confused and accidentally starts attacking itself. Imagine your nerves as wires covered with a protective coating that helps your brain communicate with the rest of your body. MS makes the body attack that coating, making it hard for the brain to send clear messages. This can make it difficult to move, balance, see clearly, or even remember things. Some people with MS feel very tired or have trouble controlling their emotions. About 2.8 million people in the world have MS. That's like one person out of every 3,000. The struggle is all too real for Simon, even in the depths of sleep. The pain he feels is undeniable and the torment he endures is relentless. He hears a whisper calling his name, but as the voice grows louder, it urges him to wake up. At first, he thought he was dreaming, so he opened his eyes to see who was calling. But to his dismay, it was a talking monkey in a space suit, telling him he was here to make a proposition. In shock, Simon Puni jumped off his bed and picked up his walking stick to escape this monkey creature in a space suit, talking to him. He even tried to shout for his parents, but before he could leave his room or make a noise, the monkey in the space suit teleported him outside the realm of the universe, a place void of time. The space monkey assured Simon Pony that he need not be afraid of him and that shouting for help was pointless for they were a million miles away from his home. He introduced himself as Amon and told Simon that out of 6 billion people on earth and 6 billion candidates, Simon was selected because he was deemed appropriate. Still in shock from listening to the monkey in a spacesuit, Simon Pony wondered what he had been chosen for. Amon, the space monkey, told him that he would grant his wish. Before Simon could say, don't cry for me, Argentina, he was transformed into his comic superhero, Superior. Still in shock, Simon asked Amon, the space monkey, what he had done to him. Amon told him to show him what he could do with his newfound powers and that all would be explained to him in a week. In the blink of an eye, Amon, the space monkey, sent Simon back to Earth. Looking around to see where he was for real, he was back in his bedroom. Realizing that he was in the form of the superhero, Superior, it dawned on him that this was not a dream, but real. Since he had gone for a whole day without a trace, Simon Puni's mother called the police about his disappearance. She was frantic and scared, and she thought the police weren't taking her seriously because when the police checked Simon's bedroom, there was no sign of any struggle. And this wasn't the first time Simon had run away from home. Suddenly, Mrs. Pony and the police officer handling Simon's disappearance heard a sound coming from Simon's room. In a swift action, the police officer drew out his gun and went upstairs to Simon's room. As he called out for Simon, hoping it was him, as the officer approached Simon's room, he was sure that someone was inside. Again, he called out for Simon, but there was no response. And Simon, who was in the image of superior, in confusion, jetted out of his room through the roof before the officer could get a glimpse of him. Chris, Simon's best and only friend, was worried about him and was making phone calls to see if anyone had sighted him, but to no avail. Unexpectedly, Chris, who was lying in his bedroom, heard a knock on his bedroom window. When he opened his window to see who it was, it was his best friend Simon in the image and shape of Superior. Chris, who was shocked, flabbergasted, stunned and surprised, held up a baseball bat 
was this cinematic figure standing in his room claiming to be his best friend Simon Pony. And you got to understand why poor Chris was freaked out. It's like seeing Henry Cavill in a Superman costume in your bedroom. Terrifying for Chris, he tried to shout out for his dad for help, for he believed he was being held against his own will. But Simon Pony, in the image of the superior, held him down from shouting. And for about 90 minutes of reasoning, Chris was convinced. Then Simon Pony, in the image of the superior, related his story of the wish monkey who granted him the wish of becoming his favorite comic cinematic hero, but was unsure if he could replicate the same powers as the comic version of Superior. He can't return home in this physique, for he believed his mother would freak out. To be frank, I can see his point of view. What would be more devastating, not seeing your son for a while or discovering he's been transformed into his favorite comic book hero by a monkey in a space suit? The good thing about being the character of Superior is that Simon and Chris know the powers that encapsulate him as they go to a remote area not too far from their neighborhood to test if Simon, in the image of Superior, can activate his powers like in the comic books. One of Superior's powers was his eyesight, for he realized he could see through solid objects. He is also endowed with microscopic and telescopic visions, which make it possible to read little tiny imprints from a far distance. To Simon's amazement, he could do these things, which was exciting. Suddenly, he realized that he has super hearing for he can hear noises and commotions from a very far distance. Not only that, he can also hear whispers. The next thing they tested was the heat and laser visions. At first, Simon, who was in the image of Superior, didn't know how to manifest and activate these powers. And when he tried, it seemed as if nothing happened. But the truth was that the Superior's heat vision is so fast, the naked eye can't see it pass by or coming. As it did activated his heat visions, unknowingly it missed its target by burning a tree near the target and before they know what was happening, there was a big blaze of fire in the forest and immediately Chris told him to use his cold breath to quench the fire before it gets any worse. So he used his cold breath to quench the fire and in fear of not being seen or discovered, they vamoosed the area and went to another location. Not looking back at the blazing fire, Chris decided to test his strength by linking up six tube trains together for him to pull. At first, Simon Pony was apprehensive, for as long as he had known himself since his ordeal with his sickness, which left him disabled, he had never done anything for himself. He had always had help, for he couldn't do anything for himself like any other teenager. But with sheer will and encouragement from his friend, Chris, he was able to pull the trains into motion. It wasn't easy at first, as it was a struggle, but with time, he was at ease. It was like he was pulling nothing. From Chris's perspective, they had covered everything on the list, but Simon told him that they had yet to test his power of flight. Chris reminded him that he had already covered that aspect, for he flew to his window to get to his room. Simon made him understand that he only flew into his bedroom out of instinct and not of him knowing how to fly. But his best friend, Chris, was having none of it, letting him know that he is indestructible and he doesn't have to be afraid to do it. Simon was still apprehensive, for he was a bit scared of being unable to control himself while flying and, worst of all, accidentally falling on someone. When Simon tried to fly, it was a bit shaky for him as he was floating and not flying. He tried to stop floating, but it was impossible. Not even Chris could stop him from floating. And when he tried to grab the tree's branches, he was too strong for the trees as he continued to float upwards. 
and his best friend's advice wasn't helping at the moment. The more he struggled to fly or do something, the higher he floated upward. But suddenly, he began to take control of his flight and everything became easy as he flew through the skies. For the first time in a long time, Simon Pony, in the image of Superior, felt whole again. He was no longer wheelchair bound. He not only could walk, but fly. And more to it, he had superpowers beyond his wildest dreams. Just right before his eyes was a catastrophe taking place as an American space station was crashing down to Earth from space due to a very heavy meteor shower. This was reported to the operatives and the engineers in Houston who were monitoring the space station as it was crashing and falling. The engineers in the space rig of the space station in orbit had no control of the space station for anything electrical had been wiped out due to the impact of a heavy meteor shower. The bad news was that they were going to land in the center of the mainland, which was a disaster for the people of that area. The worst news was that there was no time for evacuation and with immediate effect, the President of the United States of America was informed of this situation. And to let you know, Simon Pony, in the image of Superior, told one of the crew members in the crashing raft that she should tell the other crew members that he was going to fix things. But what Simon Pony failed to realize at the beginning was that this rescue mission wasn't going to be easy, as he uses his strength to slow down the velocity of the free-falling space station. And the engineers, observing from human Houston were confused in the slow fall of the space station for they were not aware of Simon Pony in the image of Superior. What was happening to the space station defied physics and pure unadulterated logic. But what was problematic for Simon Pony, who was in the image of the Superior, was that the space station body parts were falling to bits, mechanically breaking down as debris are falling off, which made things a little bit tedious for him. And not to forget, this was the first time he was testing and utilizing his new abilities. All eyes in the city could see as the space station in the sky was falling. But there was one very keen eye on the incident, who was a TV anchor called Madeline Knox who, back when she was top-notch, only cared about ratings and for some personal reasons, fell off the viewership ratings. But she sees this as an opportunity to climb back up the ladder. She was making phone calls to various sources, wanting to know what was happening and if the Chinese government was involved in this incident, for she had heard a rumor that they were building an anti-graffiti system. The more Simon Pony tried to slow down the space station from free falling at a fast rate, the more it breaks apart. So he had to be very careful how he handled the space station. The crew members were still terrified, for they thought they were closer to their demise. Slowly, Simon Pony landed the space station in the middle of the city, which caused some damage to the city, for it could have been worse. But luckily, no lives were lost as people ran for their safety from falling debris. With the naked eye, no one could see Simon Pony as the superior, and no camera or press was available. Madeline Knox and many people didn't understand what was happening. At the same time, Simon Pony checked and asked if the crew members in the raft of the space station were okay, and sure, they were. Then he told them to stay in their seats. So he lifted the space station, took it back into the air and landed it at a central park for it was an open space. Simon Pony didn't stop at one rescue mission as superior. He went to Pennsylvania to help prevent a devastating explosion when there was a reactor meltdown. By ripping out the reactor, before it exploded and lives were saved. There was a bridge collapse, which resulted in a car accident landing in the middle of train tracks beneath the bridge. The firefighters tried to help the old couple who were still alive, but 
had severe injuries, but they heard the loud noise of an oncoming train. It was too late to communicate to the driver to stop, and even if the driver managed to stop the train, it still wouldn't avoid hitting the car from its stopping distance. But a miracle occurred as an unidentified object forcefully stopped the train. And when they checked the train, they were met with two giant handprints on the frontal part of the train. In the midtown, there was a very heavy traffic jam and the roads were blocked from every nook and cranny. The problem was that a pregnant woman in an ambulance was starting to hemorrhage due to complications with her pregnancy. And there was nothing the paramedics could do for her. She was getting worse by the minute, for she needed to be in the hospital with doctors right now. And out of nowhere, Simon Pony, in the image of Superior, swiftly and carefully lifted the ambulance to the hospital. And all eyes could see a flying ambulance. However, people were still unaware of the Superior, except Madeline Knox, who followed every phenomenon rescue that defied the laws of physics. It was reported that a Canadian submarine had an accident and was stranded in the depths of the North Atlantic Ocean. The submarine consisted of 39 crew members trapped underwater for the past three days. Both the international community and the Canadian Navy had failed in the attempt to rescue the submariners. And time was of the essence, as the oxygen use was dwindling by the time. In the image of Superior, Simon Pony came to the rescue as he dragged the humongous submarine to open shore. This was the first time that many people noticed and saw him in person. While everyone was perplexed, at this figure of a personality lying on the floor, exhausted from dragging the Canadian submarine, he requested for a bottle of coke because he was extremely thirsty. The press and the media didn't know what to make of it. At first, they thought it was a publicity stunt for a new movie. But Mandeline Knox saw things differently. When she investigated the actor, Tad Scott, who played the comic book character Superior, she found out that the whole incident freaked him out. This Superior is for real, and she will do everything she can to find out his real identity. At Chris's place, Simon Pony couldn't contain his excitement at the attention he was getting as Superior. He was happy to help, but amazed at how people showed him love, for he was only used to bullying from his peers, except for his best friend, Chris. He saw this as a second chance and was thrilled he could do the impossible. These powers changed his perspective on life. He worried about his mom and how he would tell her about Amon, the space monkey. You see, Simon Pony, with his young mental perspective, thinks he had figured out who Amon is. He remembers that when he still had multiple sclerosis, he prayed every night that his illness would go away and that his mom always prayed that America would get fixed again, which a confused Chris asked him what he meant. Simon Pony explained further that he believed his prayers were answered that Amon was an angel from the almighty Jehovah and that turning him into superior was to help America. This was too much for Chris to comprehend. But the problem with Simon Pony is that he is too optimistic. For Amon, the space monkey is no angel. While Simon Pony, who was stuck in Superior's body, was having rosy adventures, life wasn't too fear on Tad Scott, who played and acted as the cinematic comic character of Superior. He was losing money, for the studio back in the making of the cinematic film, the Superior, financially backed out of the production because they didn't understand what was going on and were very skeptical about making a new movie based on the character. 
it was so bad for Tad Scott that he had to borrow money from his teammates to book a hotel. At home, Simon Pony had been declared missing for a week as he had left a note to let his parents know that he was fine. However, they were still worried and the police officer in charge of the case was a loud mouth who informed them that he believed an offender might have taken their son. He said this without having any convincing evidence because he was lazy. To get the superior's attention, Madeline Knox hatched a plan, a crazy idea in her head. On the phone with her production team, she let them understand that the way they were doing things was of the past and that getting information in their way was too dinosaur for her liking. And since she was the queen of clout, she was prepared to risk it all by putting her life on the line. And before they could convince her not to do anything drastic or stupid, she drove right into a river as her vehicle sunk deeper into the depths of the water. It was terrifying for her as she never thought it true. For at first, there was no help. It dawned on her that this might have been a very bad idea. And then she screamed for help. Lucky enough for Mandolin, Superior came to the rescue as he lifted her car from beneath the waters and everyone witnessed his heroic act. When she came out of the vehicle, Simon Pony, in the image of Superior, recognized her as the news lady on TV. She was a bit fuzzy as she puked out salt water she digested when she was beneath the river as Simon Pony asked if she was fine, but she wasn't bothered about her well-being or health. She was more interested in getting a scoop from Superior, who was shocked to learn that she faked an accident to get his attention, which to him was crazy. Before Simon Pony could comprehend what was happening, he found himself on live TV with Madeline Knox, who was asking him questions about his origins, powers, strengths, and flight. What was his connection with the comic book? Why was he in the likeness of Tad Scott, the actor who played the comic book character? Most importantly, what was his angle? He replied to Madeline Knox that there was no angle. He was just helping and he flew off. Madeline Knox's perspective of the comic character superior stems from its origin to the present. For his projected moral values are not feasible today. Not that the world had descended to a form of bestiality, but the superior can be perceived as too preachy, which doesn't go down well in today's world. But what shook Madeline's cerebral cortex is that, just like the comic, it was written during the First Depression as a beacon of hope. No one has asked the question, how did he, a comic character, come to be in existence and why? Coming back from school, and not telling anyone about the whereabouts of Simon Pony, who at the moment is stuck in the adult body of Superior, Chris came across a street bully called Shappy, who had been on his case for a while and had warned him that he shouldn't pass his street to go home. But the truth was that Chris had basketball practice and he couldn't afford to be late. But Shappy wasn't interested in his pursuit. Instead, he and his gang took his bag from him and beat the living daylights out of him for no apparent reason, just plain unadulterated bullying. When Chris got home, he met an exciting Simon Pony who was impressed with the news anchor Madeline Knox. The truth is that he had always had a crush on her. He believed she was flirting with him, but Chris was in no mood to talk for he had just been bruised and battered by a gang of bully thugs. When he saw Chris's swollen face, he asked him what had happened. But Chris wanted him to let it go. Not Simon Pony, for he had also been subjected to bullying in his past as a person with MS and he wasn't letting this go. So Chris went back to Shappy Street to confront him and his gangs. At first, Shappy thought Chris had a death wish. But before his gang of friends knew what was happening, Shappy was nowhere to be found. He just vanished because Sam Pony, in the image of Superior, had taken him to the North Pole where it was cold and gave him a mouthful on why he thinks it's inappropriate to bully someone who had lost his friend and warned him that if he ever touches Chris again, woe betide him. Just out of the blue, Chappie's friends saw him hanging on the lamppost wondering how he got there. They wanted to attack Chris again, but Chappie warned them not to touch him for fear of superior. 
Chris laughed his face off when Simon Puni told him what he had done to Shappy. He was proud of him because he believed he was better than the superior from comic books, who had only dealt with big problems. Simon Puni wanted to do more than help in accidents and house fires. He told Chris that he had asked the President of the United States if he could work for him, which initiated an invitation to the White House to visit the President. It was announced on TV as the press was outside the White House trying to get his attention before he went in. Madeline Knox was there too, and as soon as he came across the President, he asked if he could help with the wars overseas. As the president explained that the situation abroad was a little bit complicated. Shappy, after his ordeal with Superior, was downcasted and depressed. On his way, he saw the image of the Superior across the TV, and this made him more furious as he cast at the image on the screen. Amon, the space monkey, appeared to him, which at first freaked him out, for this was a talking monkey in a space suit. Amon told him he could help him take revenge on Superior, and all he had to do was pay homage to his dark and eternal master and confess that he loves Satan. In the image of the Superior, Simon Pony joined the troops of the United States of America to defeat the Taliban in Afghanistan. From his standing, he could see everything. Their guns, rifles, bombs, and booby traps scattered all over the road. Plus, he could see the location of the UN workers held hostage at a public building. As he flew towards the enemy line, the soldiers assisting him on his mission warned and pleaded with him that he should make sure civilians were at their absolute minimum. However, Simon Pony, in the image of Superior, assured them that his intentions were cleared that there wouldn't be any casualties for his purpose is not to take anyone's life. Within the blink of an eye, he began to neutralize the Taliban, for they didn't see him coming, for he was too swift. He was not visible to the ordinary eye, as he destroyed all their weapons and rescued the UN workers. In a swoop, he made 217 arrests and swept the city for mines and booby traps, which gave the Marines the chance to cover the area of Ghazni in Afghanistan. He found more hostages and made 128 arrests, and as reported, those who tried to confront him with their weapons had their arms melted. He was conquering the Taliban at a rapid rate. It was unbelievable. On the radar, he was everywhere and so fast that he was challenging to track. The press couldn't keep up, for everything was happening so fast. We need to remember that the war in Afghanistan at this time was going on for about eight years, and just in a day, in the image of Superior, Simon Puni solved the Taliban and Al Qaeda problem by capturing more Taliban and neutralizing their hold from every village in Afghanistan. The most astonishing thing is that not one single life was lost. It was the most bloodless takeover of any military operation of a country, and all eyes could see. When the war was over, Simon Pony, in the image of Superior, went to the UN to assure the world that he was no extended arm of America's imperialism and was only here to help. He promised the Afghan president that he would help build the country and also ensure that Afghan forces would be in charge instead of America or Al-Qaeda forces. He also promised aid to Iraq and some neighboring countries. He gained the trust of Muslim countries when he stopped a meteorite shower in Saudi Arabia and an earthquake in China. He diverted floods, helped dispose of unused nuclear armaments, and helped feed people in need and people experiencing poverty. The President of the United States of America thanked him on behalf of the country and the international community and let him know that he can ask for anything. Well, the President and his men expected him to ask for something tangible. But remember, Simon Pony is just 12 years old and with the mischievous guidance of his best friend Chris, he requested for batting for the Mets against the Yankees, playing the bass for his favorite rock band, shoot hoops for the Nikes against the Miami Heat, and defeat them in a basketball game. It was a dream come true for Simon Puni, whilst he was having fun. By chance, Simon's parents saw Chris with Superior on TV, which was surprising to them that he knows Superior personally. 
Shabby was an angry kid for he had always lived a miserable life. Not entirely his fault, still his surroundings were not encouraging enough to inspire him as his parents were nothing to write home about. With so much hate brewing within him, especially towards Superior, he promised to eliminate the Superior and anyone who made him angry. But he has to be patient and wait for others from Omon, the space monkey, on when to attack Superior. Still determined to know the true origins of the Superior, Madeline Knox invited Simon Puny in the image of Superior to her house for dinner and she was going to do everything in her woman power to get the real honest truth out of him for she was ready to go to any length this time for this scoop. Wearing her best dress for the occasion, Simon Puni arrived in the image of the superior. He was surprised by her apartment's elegance and noticed she had won many awards and taken pictures with important dignitaries. As he went further into her room, Amon, the space monkey, appeared to him from nowhere. Who told him his time as a superhero was up and asked if he was prepared to know why he was given the powers he had. At this time, Simon Pony was unable to move. He was stuck to the ground and the space monkey Amon was responsible for this. At first, he thought the space monkey was upset and punishing him for the rendezvous that was about to take place with Madeline Knox. But Amon was less concerned about his private life. All he wanted was to know if he was happy with his new life and if he enjoyed being Earth's protector. Or would he prefer to go back to his previous life in which Simon Pony told Amon, the space monkey, that he loves his new life and he wouldn't give it up for anything in the world. This information pleased Amon, and just at the click of his finger, he restored Simon Puni to his original form, who in surprise fell to the floor and asked the reason why the space monkey took this action. Amon told him that if he really loved his new life of flying, walking, and saving lives, and if he ever wants to become the superior again, he should sell his soul to him and he would grant his wish and that he is surprised he didn't figure out who he was from the beginning as an agent of darkness. In his original body, Simon Puni was perplexed at seeing his condition, realizing that Amon wasn't who he thought he was. Looking into the space monkey's eyes, he could see the evilness and the darkness from within. Amon then told Simon Pony that he had up to 24 hours to decide if he wanted to be the superior or remain in his incapacitated body. The moment Simon suggested he was the devil, which Amon denied, his dark minions appeared from the darkness they had been cloaking themselves, letting Simon know what he had bargained into. You see, Amon is a low-level demon who had been a failure for the past 500 years because he could not get any human to sell their soul to him. With the lack of souls, he became insignificant in the dark realm. The reason why it's been difficult was because humans were afraid to go to hell when they passed away. So Amon had to find another way of trickery of getting a human soul. Simon Puni was the perfect candidate by giving him what he desired dearly and then taking it away. And he also let the deluded Simon know that he was nothing special. He was just a random choice. Simon was lying on the floor, hopeless. Amon told him not to feel embarrassed for he was desperate and he had no choice but to grant an outrageous wish to get his way. For if he didn't acquire a willing soul by the next 24 hours, he and his minions would be demoted to the lowest pit in the dark realm. Some of Amon's minions told him to unmask his true self in the presence of Simon, but he declined because he gained nothing from scaring him. Then Amon walked away from him. Not aware of what had transpired, Madeline Knox was geared up for the encounter with Superior, but when she turned to see him, she was shocked to see a boy with crutches lying on the floor. At first, she didn't know what to make of it, 
as Simon Pony begged her not to look at him, for he was ashamed and found it difficult to explain himself. So he decided to pick up his crutches and walk away from Madeline, who at first asked him for the whereabouts of the superior. He replied to her that he was not allowed to talk about it, but it dawned on Madeline that the poor boy in crutches was the superior. And seeing that Simon was terrified, she did everything in her power to assure him, made him a meal, and after a while, Simon opened up to her and told her about how he had multiple sclerosis, had a not too easy life, and met a space monkey who he thought was an angel, but later found out he was a demon called Omon, who grants him his heart's desire by turning him into a superhero comic book character and then came back and took away his powers unless he sells his soul to him. Simon Pony was in a dilemma as he was weighing the option of either selling his soul to Omon, the space monkey, and living as a superior with the chance of living a better life or returning as he is and living with his parents with his sickness. For a boy his age, that was a tough decision. He was confused, so he asked Madeline Knox for advice on what she would do. At first, she tried to be passive, which irritated Simon, but she told him she expected him not to sell his soul. But Simon rebuked her, for she doesn't know the first thing about how he feels. For in truth, he hates his life and his body. Simon, in tears, was deeply depressed. The next day, Madeline took Simon to a hospice center where kids recuperate after a big operation. At first, Simon was a bit hesitant to go in, for he thought Madeline was trying to admit him into the hospice center. But that was not the case, as she revealed that when she was seven years old, she spent six months in the hospital and used to live at the hospice center for two years as a kid when she had leukemia. As she showed Simon around, he could see kids like himself going through what he was going through without being discouraged by their physical health and shortcomings. Then she revealed to Simon that she'd had 22 operations. It was that serious that half her hip was removed, and every month she comes to the hospice to do a blood test. One thing the center helped her do was not to let her illness hold her back. And this place inspired her to be a creative writer. Simon talked to a seagull who asked why he was on crutches. He told her he had multiple sclerosis. In a happy mood, she told him about how she wants her room decorated when she goes back home, when she gets better. And that when she grows up, she wants to join a band and become a speech therapist. The Madeline let Simon know that she understood how he felt. He wanted to be a superhero so that people could love him. And that's okay. But she made him know that the greatest love he has is at home with his parents. And just like that, Simon Pony returned home to his parents. When Madeline Knox's boss called her to know how successful she was with the superior, she lied that he had cancelled the dinner date at the last minute and was leaving for good. Her boss was livid and the next day in the papers and on the news, it was reported that the superior had left Earth for another planet. Amon was disappointed. Chris was happy that his friend was back to himself and back home safely. According to the superior storyline, his most vicious powerful arch enemy is a world-destroying nemesis called the Annihilator. He was coming to destroy Earth, and the superior was the only person who could stop him. Since Simon Pony seems to have confused his offer to sell his soul to him, Amon, the space monkey, made a wager with Shapi by transforming him into Abraxas, another foe of the superior to cause destruction, which will force Simon to have no choice but to sell his soul. And Shapi, who was filled with hatred, had sent his parents to their demise with the help of Amon, the space monkey. As if life couldn't get more complicated for the actor playing the cinematic superhero superior, Tad Scott, as the press, hounded him for the responsibility of the superior's disappearance. Some even suggested that he was the superior who once saved the world. He denied being that superior and just an actor playing a comic 
oak character. Suddenly, a big ship filled with people came out of nowhere and crashed into the tallest skyscraper in the city. And this was Sharpie's handiwork in the image of Abraxas, under the guidance of Amon, the space monkey. As the large ship fell with debris of skyscraper tumbling downwards and fell on people as they ran for their lives. Some who were in the building were eliminated due to the brutal atrocity by Sharpie as he showed his excitement in causing devastating destruction. Then he asked Amon who was next for him to eliminate. Amon told him to send a message to the superior by forcing Simon Puni to offer his soul before midnight in exchange for becoming a superhero. Without hesitation, Sharpie, embodying the image of Abraxas, commanded a nearby cameraman to start filming him. Then he challenged the superior to a fight, making one thing clear. If the superior didn't reach him within 60 seconds, he would unleash hell on earth, causing devastation and loss of lives in the city. In Simon's neighborhood, there was an immediate evacuation of people in order to save lives, for the US military was ready battle for Abraxas. But the truth is that, in reality, there were no challenge for him. And Simon knew this as a fact, for he understood the game Amon, the space monkey, was playing. At this point, he had no choice despite Chris warning him not to fall for the space monkey's trickery and even his father warned him to let it go and let the military take care of Abraxas. Desperate to save lives, Simon Puni gave in to Amon's wishes. He became superior again and joy and happiness filled Amon's heart. After 500 years of failure, he had successfully made Simon, who is now in the image of the superior, sell his soul to him and he couldn't be bothered by what happened next with him and Sharpie. Right in the presence of Sharpie was Tad Scott, challenging him to stop eliminating people for he knows it's him he wanted. At first, people who were watching and bystanders thought it was Simon Puni's superior. However, in the image of Abraxas, Sharpie knew he wasn't the superior he was after and then he blasted him as he commended him for his bravery. Lying on the floor injured, Tad Scott screamed for everyone close by to run for their lives as Sharpie lifted a boss and tried to slam it on the weak actor. And out of nowhere, he was stopped by Simon Puni in the image of the superior. And Simon then let Tad Scott know that his films are awesome. He faced the challenging Sharpie in the image of Abraxas, whacked him with the boss, knocked him off his feet, threw him away like a piece of rubbish and blasted him to the ground. Abraxas didn't know what hit him. Just behind him was Amon, the space monkey in the image of the Annihilator. And before Simon Puni could move a muscle, he blasted him with his gigantic laser gun. Simon's father tried to reassure his wife that their son was doing fine. But she reminded him that Simon was only 12 years old. Madeline Knox realized that Simon had sold his soul to the space monkey Amon. The Annihilator's blast caused so much destruction that Simon had to avoid him to save people from danger, which irritated Amon who was in the image of the Annihilator. He couldn't understand why Simon cared so much for people and he decided to cause more destruction around him by eliminating more people. He promised that he and Sharpie in the image of Abraxas would turn Earth into a graveyard by the time they were finished. Due to Simon Puni avoiding a confrontation with Amon in the image of the Annihilator because he was more interested in saving people's lives around him, Sharpie in the image of Abraxas took advantage and struck at him hard, punching him continuously without taking a breath and asking him to fight back. Then he threatened his mother and this infuriated Simon Puni as he used his heat rays to make his helmet overheat and then flung him away into a building. Amon, in the image of the Annihilator, was relentless as he continued with his annihilation without remorse. Well, he is a demon. Simon Puni made the mistake of trying to reason with Amon wanting him to know that the fight was between the two of them and not the poor people he was eliminating. But that infuriated him as he blasted Simon Puni and also eliminated more people in the process. Then he commanded Sharpie to level everything in the East Village while he went to the power station to see if he could trigger some 
mechanical meltdown, which would cause more atrocity. This was to confuse Simon Pony, for they were splitting up and to make it worse, Amon, in the image of the Annihilator, sent a rocket to slam against the building with people to distract Simon Pony from following them. So swiftly, before the rocket launched, could slam against the building, as the people in it had given up hope of surviving, he managed to catch up with the weapon and divert it and make it go straight for Amon. And he was struck, he stumbled and fell on the building around him, which weakened his standing position. As Shapi wanted to start his campaign of destruction swiftly from nowhere in the eastern village, Simon Puni lifted him up beyond the stratosphere and gave him the beating of a lifetime. He ripped his suit to bits and rendered it obsolete. Then he took what was left of him and his suit and used him as a cannonball as he struck Amon, who was in the image of the Annihilator, and there was a great blast of explosion. He defeated the two single-handedly. Ashapi lost consciousness. Amon, now back to being the space monkey, didn't feel defeated. In the end, he thought he won, for he now has the soul of Simon Pony to bargain with with Satan. He began to gloat at Simon's naivety, but Madeline Knox told Simon not to listen to Amon, for he doesn't own anything. Amon was shocked by this statement from her. She then explained further that the problem with Amon is the need for more research about the origin and the powers of the superior, for he made Simon the most powerful being in the galaxy whose every cell in his body is indestructible, impenetrable, and undying. He never ages under the yellow sun, and every atom in his body is essentially immortal. This means Amon bought something he could never collect till eternity, for he indirectly made a donation. Seeing and knowing he had failed, his host of demons, who were his minions in hell, came out of the shadows and dragged Amon the space monkey to the bottomless pit of hell, and he was seen no more. And just like magic, Simon Pony transformed from the superior to his natural and old self, and he was happy about it and regretted nothing. As far as the public knows, they believe that the superior sacrificed himself for the sake of humanity and died after he defeated Abraxas and the Annihilator. The whole world paid tribute to him, for he genuinely wanted to save the world from itself and be an excellent place to live in. He fed the needy and fought for the weak, and such a hero will not be forgotten. As for Simon Puni, he went back home to his parents and requested to go back to school. In school, he wasn't the usual timid boy from the beginning. His confidence had grown, he made more friends, and his disability was no problem. Yes, he couldn't play basketball again, but there are more important things in life than basketball. As for our brave actor, Tad Scott, things were getting better for him, as his film, The Superior, was the most watched film internationally, beating the box office back to back, and he also became a national hero for his bravery on that day, he confronted Abraxas. And when it comes to Abraxas and the leftover mechanical bits of the Annihilator, the government hid them in a hidden, unknown vault. Madeline Knox is the only one who knows the whole truth and the story of the boy who became a superhero. But to keep everyone involved safe, she decided not to publish it, as her date was waiting for her at the Superior movie premiere which consists of a lot of celebrities and the main character, Tad Scott. Simon Pony and his friends were there, along with her, and they all lived happily ever after.